Hello, hello, Hannah the Suburban Witch here, and today I'm doing an unboxing video for you of the Hieronymus Bosch Tarot. Got a funky name, I know. If you haven't been to art school, you may not know who it is. Hieronymus Bosch was a painter from the uh, Hieronymus the bleh. You think I'd be able to say his name really well, seeing as my heritage is Dutch, but I I cannot. Hieronymus Bosch is a mouthful, regardless of the language you speak. And he was a Dutch painter from the Netherlands, Holland. His work is surreal and he was classed as a bit of a madman but anyway and I'm excited to see how it translates into the tarot. So this deck is created by Travis McHenry who is an occultist and an author and I mean from what I gather based on this closed deck and I haven't read the little guidebook or anything is that he has chosen specific items and paintings from Hieronymus Bosch's life and collection to represent certain cards. So let's have a look. I'm not, I went to art school, but like my focus was interior design. So not super familiar with this art, but I'm excited to just see how it comes out. Every time I film an unboxing, I forget the one tool that I actually really need. And that is scissors. I'm not gonna do that. There was a girl in my high school who didn't come to school one day and I called her cause she was my best friend. And I was like, hey, where are you? She was at the dentist because she'd broken her front tooth in half. Like it snapped in half because she tried to open a tampon box like with plastic on the outside with her teeth. So I think of that every time. You probably wonder why I do that, why I show it to you that I haven't opened it. And I don't know what it is, but I think I need you guys to know that I literally haven't opened it. You're getting my very first thoughts on the deck when I show it to you. That's fun. Little magnet clasps, but it's, I like that. That's fun, it's different, it's good. Oh, and the cards do not look as big as I thought they would be. Right, fun looking guidebook. So he talks about the fact that Bosch's paintings were rife with esoteric symbolism. The guiding philosophy that Travis used when creating this deck was, what if Hieronymus Bosch had been commissioned to create the first tarot deck? What symbols would he use as suits for the minor arcana? What figures might he consider as trump cards in the major arcana? The tarot began, after all, as a game, and only later was it used as a tool for divination. As I pulled scenes and characters from Bosch's artwork, I had the benefit of knowing the hermetic and astrological meanings inherent in the cards. I have rendered these as accurately as possible within the given constraints. Scholars of both art and the occult may question my choices and hopefully discover even deeper esoteric meanings than I have revealed. So I know this one irks some of you because you've commented on other ones, but it looks like he has renamed some of the cards. There's a little um, note here in the, in the guidebook from the author. Any tarot reader who dares reorder or rename the cards of the Major Arcana may be accused of having done so out of hubris or extreme stupidity. In the Hieronymus Bosch tarot, however, cards have been renamed to better align the meaning behind Bosch's artwork and with the core meaning of the cards. The meaning of the Major Arcana cards thus bears significance in the modern world, despite having been painted more than 500 years ago. I'm actually glad that I'm flicking through, and I've learned this after doing lots of unboxings, I'm glad that I'm flicking through this first because I feel like there's a lot of changes and I would have been like, what is going on? He's changed every single major arcana except for three. The only three that have their original names are the lovers, death, and the world card. I'm concerned for the miners. Instead of forcing Bosch's images into the traditional four suits of the tarot, this minor arcana has been designed around Bosch's motifs and allegories. His most commonly recurring symbols were berries, birds, skates, swords, vessels, 
barrels, vases, cups, books and coins. Many of these symbols have familiar correspondence in the traditional tarot. With the suits rearranged, it is not necessary to rely on numbered cards. Each suit is now comprised entirely of court cards, along with an ace, which represents the suit's meaning as a whole. Excuse me? This novel approach brings new life to the minor arcana, and once the octaves of the court cards are learned, reading with these cards becomes second nature. You know what I love about the tarot? I love that I can pick up any deck and read it because it's the tarot. You know what I don't love about oracle cards? Whilst I enjoy oracle cards, I need to know the deck intimately to be able to use it. So I mean, you can use anyone technically, but I like knowing what the meaning is behind and you know all of the ins and outs of it. So I don't like just picking up a random oracle card because they're not all the same. And I feel like this is falling more and more into the oracle card deck that just happens to have 78 cards. Does this have 78 cards? Oh my god, no, this is not an this is not a tarot deck. What, what is happening? I haven't even looked at the cards. Minor Arcana suits. Berries are earth. Birds are air. Skates are water and metal. Swords are metal and fire. Vessels are water. Books are earth and air. Coins are metal. And seven deadly sins is fire. <sighs> Minor Arcana Court Cards, Page, Knight, Baron, Prince, Princess, Queen, King, and Ace. So the Berries suit has seven cards. Page, Knight, Baron, Princess, Queen, and King, and Ace. Ace is last. Why are, you, why are you doing this to me? Okay, so each of them has seven. Oh my god, I have to get a calculator. And 22 months. So there's 71 cards? Don't even know. Guys, I have, I have a massage appointment in like 10 minutes and I was hoping that this would not. I'm making a presumption. I haven't actually seen the cards. I haven't worked with the cards yet. Reminder, this is just my first, first look. I may have to film the rest of this when I get back from my massage appointment. So my makeup may look a bit funky. I like that they're using the paper now. We've got some, they, the, the quality of the cardstock feels really smooth. These are not sticky. You know how I hate the sticky decks. Look at these, they actually just, these spread nicely. All right, it's, feels thick. I'm gonna get my normal right away Smith in comparison. So I can pick that up very easily with one hand. Not so easy. Let's have a look next to each other. You can see how much thicker this deck is to a standard Rider Waite Smith. Back of the cards, the cards themselves have no borders to them. I never know how I feel about that personally. I'm going to film a flip through just based on the first couple. Let's just a little, little uh, dive in, hey? I mean, it does have the full vibes, right? It's called the Wayfarer. If I saw this, I would know, I would get it. There's, there's even a little dog. Makes sense to me. Same with this next one, being the magician. It's called the conjurer. Yeah, we've got the table, we've got the elements on it. Even one arm up and down, yeah. I see it. Mistress of Terror. Okay, I feel like that's taking on a whole new vibe for the high priestess. He's put words at the bottom. So control, submission, feminine power. So you've got the keywords. So this is good when you've got a deck that just goes wildly different like this it's good if you struggle to remember meanings as well so it can be really really helpful for some people virgin mother yep tracks kings of the east instead of the emperor mm -hmm. i feel it's going to take me a little while to wrap my head around this particular deck the images themselves look very interesting and i can see I can see how they could really, really work in cartomancy. Tarot, it uses the framework of tarot. I don't, I don't know if I would call it a tarot deck myself. Tarical? A tarical. 
like a tarot oracle, potentially, I'd roll with. Or just, I don't know if we can claim the word tarot here, but I can see the appeal of some of these cards. This one is card number seven and it's called Deception. Now, number seven is the chariot. And I actually had to go and like look it up and double, double take because this does not bring anything close to chariot vibes whatsoever. And the words lit, listed, blah, blah, listed are lies, deceit, hidden truths, secrets. <laughs> um, the artwork is really intriguing. I can see this being a super, super useful card in a reading to come up, but it's not the chariot. So here is our flip through of these cards and a little reminder that on YouTube, you can change the playback. So if I'm going too fast or too slow, you can change that to suit what you want. So here we go. Are you ready? Cause these, these are wild. So we have the Wayfarer, the Conjurer, Mistress of Terror, a frightening image isn't it virgin mother kings of the east the surgeon the lovers at least this one is very true to the traditional right away smith he's done a good job getting that one there deception ignorance Illumination, Table of Plenty. How this man was not arrested for witchcraft in his time, I do not know. <laughs> this is my first time seeing this card, the Flower Pusher. <laughs> oh my god, I can never use this for legitimate readings. <laughs> the Barrel Boy, Death, I like that one. Hello, yoo -hoo. Here to collect your soul. <laughs> Not a good time. Come back later. Paradise. Temptation. River to hell. Ooh, look at that. River to hell. That is good. I'm writing a book at the moment on fallen angels. That's actually quite good inspiration for one of my scenes. I might use that. The dreamer. The grail knight. The Christ Child. Ascent of the Blessed. The World. That's all the mages. Then, then we get weird, guys. Then we get weird. Whew, let me shake out my arms. Hard to hold these up. Okie dokie. Are you ready? Page of Berries. Knight of Berries. Baron of Berries. Princess of Berries. Queen of Berries. Like I get he's using this limited subject matter, but I just, I really don't like the, the change to the miners. Like, yeah, changing the names of some of the majors, yeah, yeah, but like, has he gone too far? Ace of Berries. Page of Birds. I'm sure he expected criticism on this. Knight of Birds. Baron of Birds. But if people are art aficionados, I'm sure they will love this. And it may really work well. Like it's never, it's always a personal preference each deck, isn't it? My job here is firstly to tell you what I think. But that's based on, it's just based on me, right? My ideals. Page of Skates. Of course I'll do a review. I'm really happy with the um, cardstock. On this, it's it's really beautiful. King of Skate, Ace of Skates, Page of Swords. Oh, I need to shake up my arms again. Whoo, guys! The sacrifices I make for you all, holding up a tarot deck for this long. I need to go to the gym. I do go to the gym. My upper body strength is not where it's at. Like Queen of Swords. Hmm. Yeah, Ooh. I like his butt crack. Does he have an arrow in his butt crack? <laughs> it's just wild. 
Images you never thought you'd see, right? Keeps going in and out of focus on me. I shouldn't have a background, hey? Learn your lesson, Hannah. This happens every time. <laughs> I don't know how he survived painting all of these. We're almost there. My, what an interesting interpretation, page of coins. <laughs> the sins, seven deadly sins, I, I kind of like that idea. It could be really interesting in a reading. I'll probably use this more like a oracle deck, I think. Oh, that edging is just gorgeous, isn't it? Now I have noticed I've barely played with this at all and it's already slightly curved. Can you see that? It's, it's really um, interesting that that's done that already. It shuffles beautifully. There is no stickiness. So this puts to rest my theory that the edging create stickiness. I think it's always going to be just the actual cards themselves. Right, let's see how it spreads. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. That's nice. That works well. Card for my day. Let's see. Night of Books. Makes sense. I'm on the pursuit to make up for yesterday in my writing and get 3,000 words written. So, perhaps this has intrigued you to find out more about this deck. Uh, if you love this art style, go for it. If you don't mind having to learn something outside the box or doing something different. If you're an Aquarius, probably right up your alley. I don't think this deck's for everyone, but I'm I'm interested, right? It's I'm not gonna not use it. It's not pushed me off it like that. I just I'm a Virgo, right? It has to, if it's called a tarot, it has to be a tarot. It doesn't feel like a tarot. I can understand when some people change cups to shells, but they still have the numbers and the court, right? They don't, and they still have four suits. This one having seven has just, it's a little too far outside the rules that I associate with tarot. That might just be me, might not be you. Let me know your thoughts below. I'm excited to see how it goes and I will post a review once I've had a good chance to play with it. As always, I hope you have a lovely day wherever you are in the world today and I will chat to you next time. Mm -hmm.